If you own a 3D printer, you've probably heard of Octoprint. Octoprint is great open source software designed to control and stream G-code to a 3D printer. Octoprint works great when it's installed on a dedicated Raspberry Pi. The software is really designed to only control one printer at a time, but today I'm going to show you how to use one Raspberry Pi, multiple instances of Octoprint, and control multiple 3D printers. This video is going to be a lot of screen share, and we're going to do a lot of Linux commands that might seem intimidating, but don't worry, I'm going to leave all the commands that I use in the comments below, and you can just copy and paste them. This does work best with a fresh install of Octoprint, so if you're using an existing configuration, be careful because you might corrupt it and you'll have to start from scratch. First thing we're going to do is grab a copy of the Octoprint software. Octoprint.org. Go to the downloads page. And the easiest thing to use is the OctoPi package. This is a package that's meant to install directly on a Raspberry Pi. Download that. While that's downloading, we also need the Win32 Disk Imager tool. Download a copy of that. If the downloads are complete, plug in your SD card. For this, I'm using an 8 gig card. I recommend using either an 8 gig or a 16 gig, so you have lots of room. If you've used your SD card for a Raspberry Pi install or a Linux install, you're going to need to clean it up first. Let's open up Windows Disk Management. Find your SD card. You've got all these partitions on here that we need to remove. Be careful, you don't want to remove any partitions from your system. Just from the SD card. Delete both volumes. Create a new simple volume, next, use all the space, next, 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 finish. Now we have a new clean volume ready to use on our SD card. Close this, close your browser, open up the downloads folder, install your Win32 disk imager, launch your disk imager, Make sure your SD card is selected over here for device. Open your OctoPi software folder. Select the image file. Open. Select write. And this is going to erase everything on the SD card, so click yes. Now that the write is successful, click OK. Exit. Click on the SD card. Edit the octopi network.txt file. This is where you'll set how the networking is configured on your octopi. If you're using a wired connection, no worries. Just plug it in and you'll be fine. I'm going to use a wireless connection. We need to uncomment these three lines. Leave the quotes and put in your SSID exactly as it is. It is case sensitive. Same with your Wi-Fi password. Put it here exactly as it is. It's case sensitive. Leave the quotes. When you're done, save that file. Now let's eject the SD card. And you can remove the SD card from your PC. Put your SD card in your Raspberry Pi and power it up. Remember, the Raspberry Pi is very picky about what power it needs. Try to get something that's 2 amp. Your Raspberry Pi is going to pick an IP address based on DHCP, and you won't know what that is. You can obtain this information from your router. Open up a browser. My IP is 192.168.1.182. Now with the Octoprint Setup Wizard, click Next. Set up your username, keep access control enabled, click next, next, you can leave these default for now, next, finish. Now we have the first instance of Octoprint set up. Now here comes the tricky part. 
If you don't already have a copy, download a copy of Putty. Install Putty. Let's open up Putty. Enter your Pi's IP address. Click open. Yes, we're okay with the key. Your default login is going to be Pi, and your password is going to be Raspberry. Now we're going to work through a list of commands that's going to set up four instances of Octoprint on this Raspberry Pi. We'll separate them by port number. You should be able to just copy and paste this list of commands into your SSH window to achieve the same thing. First, we log in as root. We'll change directory to etc init d. Now we're going to create three additional startup scripts. We're copying the original octoprint init file and creating a new one called octoprint2. This is also changing all the parameters that say octoprint into octoprint2. Update permissions on octoprint2. Now we'll create the third instance of octoprint in the init file. Same command, just with three instead of two. Update permissions. And now we'll create the fourth instance of Octoprint in the init file. Same command with four. Update permissions. Now when the Raspberry Pi boots, it will start four instances of Octoprint instead of one. Now we'll change to our etc default directory. And we're going to add configuration entries for our three new instances of Octoprint. This command is creating a copy of the original Octoprint file into a new file and changing the existing port number. Octoprint runs on port 5000. Our new Octoprint 2 will run on 5001. Octoprint 3 will run on 5002. Octoprint 4 will run on 5003. Update the three new Octoprint configs, Octoprint 2, Octoprint 3, Octoprint 4. Now let's reboot the Raspberry Pi. Now let's open up the browser and confirm that the original instance of Octoprint works. Everything looks good there. Now direct your browser to port 5001. This is your new Octoprint 2 instance. Go through the wizard just like before. And you have another instance of Octoprint running on the Pi. Let's open up the original in a new tab. These are completely separate instances of Octoprint. Now let's open up a new tab, and we'll go to port 5002. This is your third instance of Octoprint. Go through the wizard like before, and let's open up the fourth instance. Four different instances of Octoprint. Now you can go through and customize each one as you like. I'm going to put my Prusa on the first instance, change the title of this instance, and make it orange. I'm going to put my ANET A2 on the second instance, and make it black. I'm going to put my Delta printer on the third instance. Make it blue. I'll put my CR10 on the fourth instance. Let's make it red. Now you've got all four of your tabs that are named correctly and they're different colors so you can tell which printer's which. Now we're going to get into a little trickier part of this configuration. You need to know which USB port each printer's plugged into. The only way to do this is to rename the ports. Leave all your printers unplugged except for one. Plug in your first printer. For this example, we're going to start with the ANET A2. You'll notice you'll see the first USB port available, but you don't know what that is. So let's get back into PuTTY. Change directory to var log. ls to list the directory. I found the easiest way to find out what was plugged in is to cat the messages log. sudo cat messages. You can see when the new printer was plugged in, what its ID vendor is, ID product is, its serial number, its product number, its manufacturing number. 
We'll need these to differentiate in between the multiple printers. Now we're going to create UDEP rules to name each one of the USB ports. We're creating a new file in etc udev rules.d. We're going to create subsystem entries for TTY on each one of the printers. Use the values you found in the messages log. The ID vendor 1A86, the ID product 7523. Then for the sim link, put in the name of the printer that you plugged in, ANET A2. Control X, Y, Enter to save. You'll need to reboot the Pi for these changes to take effect. I'm going to reboot it now just to show how this works. You can enter all of your printers into the rules file at the same time if you wish. If you have multiple printers that are the same make and model, you might have problems with different vendor IDs and product IDs. Each one of these need to be unique, or you can't label the USB port correctly. I have multiple ANET printers that share the same vendor ID and product ID, so it gets really challenging finding an attribute that's different so you can use multiple printers on the same Pi. Nicer machines will have a serial number you can use. We'll see that when we enter the Prusa. After the reboot's done, let's restart Putty. Log back in. To confirm your port rename worked, you can do sudo ls-l slash dev let's grep tty there's your new anet a2 port linked to usb 0 now let's go back to the octoprint gui our anet a2 session refresh go into settings serial connections and under additional serial ports enter your new serial port name slash dev slash anet a2. Click save and refresh your browser. Now under your serial port settings you'll have your new port. Select your baud rate. I'm going to save connection settings and click connect. Now your first printer is connected and ready to go on your new port. Now we'll repeat this process for all the printers we want to use. We'll plug the printer in, find it in the log, Add it to the rules file, and then add it in the GUI. Now I just plugged in my delta, change directory to var log, cat messages. Here's our vendor ID and product ID for this printer. We'll edit the rules file. Our vendor ID is 10C4, and our product ID is EA60. And we'll call this one Castle. Control X, Y to save. Now we'll plug in our next printer. Third printer is plugged in. We'll check the log. Add another line in the rules file. Vendor ID is 0403. Product ID is 6001. And this one will be CR10. And we'll plug in our fourth printer. Cat messages. Notice on the Prusa it lists its serial number. That can be really handy in telling the printers apart. Edit the rules file. Vendor ID is 2C99. Product ID is 1. And this will be Prusa. When you have all the printers in the rules file, reboot. When the reboot's done, restart Putty. Verify your new port links look good. Pseudo ls dash l slash dev prusa is on tty acm0 fossils on usb0 cr 10s on usb1 anet a2 is on usb2 now let's head back to the gui we'll go to the instance for the prusa go to settings serial connection additional serial ports slash dev slash prusa save refresh select your new port Click connect. Printer's connected. Go to the COSL instance, settings, serial connection, slash dev, slash COSL, save, refresh, select your new port, save, printer's connected, CR10, settings, serial connection, slash dev, slash CR10, save, refresh, select your new port, save connection settings, connect. Now all four of your printers are set up and ready to use. To make things even easier, you can use Slick3R, 
and in each one of your printer settings, you can add your host ID and port number and your API key. Your API key can be found in the settings API. Now you can upload G codes straight from your slicer. For all this, I'm using a Raspberry Pi 3 Model B. With four printers all streaming G code at once, you can take a look at top. I'm not even using 4% of the CPU. If you had a USB hub, you could even add more printers. You could also add cameras. Cameras would add quite a bit of load to the configuration, but it can be done. I hope you found this video helpful. I know it really helps me when I'm trying to test multiple 3D printers. I have two Raspberry Pis running nine 3D printers and everything's working out great. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up or consider subscribing to my channel. If not, leave your thoughts below and as always, thanks for watching.